Chapter 34 Day 5 2300 Hours Cameron opened his eyes and gasped. Before him stood his friends, the ones he had died saving. He looked at Maria, Floof, and even Stephen. He turned and saw Bernard and Andreas. Even Horton was there. For a moment he found comfort that everyone was there with him, but it faded quickly as he remembered that Amanda was alone in the darkness of death. Move! Cameron shouted, pushing Andreas aside. He opened his inventory and scanned it for the bag of crystals. What? Cameron boomed. No! To his horror, the bag that contained the life crystals was no longer in his possession. He realized he had no armor, no weapons. He had nothing. He was wearing only his starter clothes. No! He screamed as he pounded his fist against the console of the machine behind him. This can't be! Where's the bag? He was desperate and fearful. He promised Amanda that he wouldn't leave her alone. He couldn't let her down. Why, the very idea of it sent waves of panic through his body. What's wrong, Cameron? Maria asked as she rushed forward and took hold of his upper arms. She tried to lock her eyes onto his, but he was evading her. He shook his head and trembled with fury. The crystals, he stuttered. They're gone! Amanda's crystal, I can't find it! Calm down, Maria shushed him. It's okay. When we revived Gino, he didn't have anything either. There has to be an explanation. Grizzly, where are the fucking crystals? Cameron suddenly shouted. What happened to them? Cameron, I cannot tell you the location of any particular item. Grizzly replied. It's against the rules, but I will say that when you die and get revived, the items you held remain on your corpse. You will have to go back to your body to retrieve them. Fine, Cameron snapped. Where's my body? I've pinned the location of your corpse on the map, Grizzly said. Cameron opened his map and saw a pulsing red dot two zones south of the one he was currently in. He also saw that most of the map had been shaded in with a dark blue color. That color had never been there before. Grizzly, Cameron said. What does the blue mean? The blue indicates what zones of the map have been affected by the storm. Grizzly sighed, sounding apologetic. The storm is a terrible thing. It drains your health and armor at a rate of one point per second. You also have to be wary of storm crawlers, monsters that exist only in the environment that the storm brings. You're fucking kidding me, Cameron growled. Is there any way to travel through it? You can acquire a bunch of shield potions by crafting and through the premium store, Grizzly answered. Or... If you have the funds, you can upgrade your exosuit with an environmental hazard protection module, which can also be crafted or is available in the store. But I was in my exosuit when I died, Cameron said. I'll have to buy another one. No, Grizzly said. Once you purchase an exosuit, you can summon it at any time. If it's destroyed, there's a three-hour cooldown period, but for you, that time is long past. All right, Cameron said. Grizzly's news that there was still hope calmed him, though he had no time to waste. He had to get the crystals from his body. I'm leaving, guys, Cameron said as he turned to the rest of his party. I have to get the bag of crystals. I can't let my daughter down. And before you ask, yes, this is worth risking my life over. We understand, Mr. Cameron, Bernard said as he stepped forward and supportively placed his hand on Cameron's shoulder. And we believe in you. We do, Maria agreed. We will get you there. It won't... No, Cameron shook his head and spoke sternly. You guys are not risking anything else on my behalf. Stay here. Survive. There's to be no more dying. Do you understand? Like hell? Maria tried to argue, but Cameron was insistent. I said no, Cameron persisted. This is... this is my journey. I will be fine as long as there are no more calamitous Rexuses. Maria stood and stared daggers at Cameron, but finally she closed her eyes and relented. Fine, Cameron, she said, but you better fucking take care of yourself, do you hear me? If you die, that means you're gone forever. Everyone only gets one crystal per person. I will be fine, Cameron reassured her. He looked at the woman that he had grown fond of over the past five days and brushed his hand through the hair on the side of her head. I'm Cameron fucking Jameson, top-rated player in the blood games. Everything is going to be okay. 
Whatever. She rolled her eyes and placed her palms flat against the sides of his face. Shut up and kiss me already. Cameron leaned in and pressed his lips against Maria's and held them there for a few seconds. He pulled back, though, gave her a thin smile, and turned away. Thank you all, he said to everyone as he sent loving looks their way. I've grown to care about you all very much. I want the best for each one of you. He briefly glanced at Stephen, and the man shook his head and turned away. My role as a father comes before anything else, Cameron continued. I have to get Amanda back. I have to get Pag back. The kids, they don't deserve to be left behind. They deserve all of our efforts if they are going to grow up here. Everything we have. I will be back. I promise you all this. We will survive. I'll do everything in my power to ensure that. Again, everyone, thank you. I, I love you all. You're my new family. Everyone took turns stepping forward and hugging their friend. It was an emotional moment, especially for Andreas, who welled like a banshee. Cameron thought it odd and was rather disturbed by the interaction, but he hugged the Dutchman anyway. When everyone was gone, Stephen stepped up to Cameron. The two adversaries stared at each other for a moment in silence. Finally, however, Stephen spoke. You're the oddest dickhead to kill on this old island, mate, he said with a hint of respect in his voice. Next to me, I mean. It would be a shame if some bloody storm offed you. Be safe. Don't die. These people depend on you. Thanks, Stephen, Cameron said with a nod. Stay out of trouble while I'm gone. Well, I can't promise that, Stephen said with a sly smile. What I'll try. Cameron patted him on the shoulder and turned away. I'll see you soon, everyone, Cameron called back as he walked toward the stairs. He took one final look and then began to jog down to the main level. Time to do this, Cam, he said to himself as he quickly opened the premium store menu. You've forgiven yourself. The main level was littered with wounded and exhausted players. Cameron hesitated when he saw them, for he was fearful that they would immediately turn their weapons toward him. Fortunately, no such thing happened. The resurrection sphere had become a sort of unspoken neutral zone. People were sitting together, relaxing, playing cards, and sleeping soundly. As Cameron walked past them, most of the ones that were awake turned their heads his way and nodded. He heard a great number of whispers as he walked through them. His position as number one on the leaderboards had no doubt garnered him a bit of fame. He found the tab for the exosuit upgrades and scrolled down. You found Amanda. He found the environmental hazard protection module and purchased it. He felt something heavy enter his inventory and grunted at their extra weight. Slowly, though, he trudged forward toward the main door. As Cameron reached out to push the door open, he felt a hand on his shoulder. In spite of the weight, he spun around and found the face of Floof staring at him. The man looked troubled, though somehow resolute. You listen to me, Cameron! Floof shouted with a tone that suggested he was feeling full-on disbelief in his own words. This goes against every self-preservation-focused cell in my entire body! You will not go off into the storm on some goddamned suicide mission and expect me to listen to you when you say stay behind. No, sir. Not after every stupid thing you have done. You are my friend and I will not hear it anymore. Make room. The floofening cometh. Cameron stared at Floof for a moment before finally sighing and lowered his head. Fine, Floof, he said. Floof was a man who could not be argued with. But we have to hurry, and you need to buy an environmental hazard protection module. By, uh, who's a what's it now? Floof repeated as he followed Cameron into the darkness outside. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure I... Just take this. Cameron sighed and set the module onto the ground. I'll just buy another one. Cameron opened the store and purchased another module. After he closed the window, he watched as Floof climbed into his exosuit. A green light suddenly covered Floof's body, and he gave his partner a thumbs up. Cameron thought of his own exosuit and how to summon it, but then it suddenly appeared in front of him. Apparently all he had to do was will the exosuit into being. He stared up at it and then quickly climbed in. The metal arms and legs closed around his own, and then the green light surrounded his own body. When that was done, he turned toward the large open yard in front of him. Monsters of all shapes and sizes skulked about, seemingly searching for players to kill. 
Cameron looked at Floof, who just shrugged his shoulders in response to the threat ahead of them. There's really no way around them, is there? Cameron asked with a sigh. Floof approached him, and the blue light of his ethereal shield appeared in front of him. It would seem not, Cameron, Floof replied. The exosuit's energy sword flashed into being, and Cameron summoned his ethereal cannon and a fireball. I guess we should run, then, Cameron suggested. Running would be better than walking, Floof answered. Stay behind me. I will protect us. Cameron took a step forward, and suddenly gunfire and whooping erupted from behind him. The people from inside the sphere charged out, firing their weapons and hurling magic at the monsters. Some climbed into exosuits, and walls began forming all around them. Go, Cameron! Someone in an exosuit shouted as he approached. We will make sure you get out of here safely! Cameron looked at the man, a stranger, and nodded. Thank you, he said sincerely. Thank you all. Of course, the man nodded. We believe in you. At that, Cameron and Floof charged forward. Bullets and magic whizzed past them, and monsters began to howl and roar as they charged the people. A fireball flew from Cameron's hand and exploded in the face of a lumbering cyclops. The monster stumbled backwards, and the duo charged past it. Stay alert, Cameron! Floof shouted back. There's no telling what these beasts are capable of! He slammed his shield into a werewolf, knocking it out of the way, and the two continued onward toward the trees ahead. Oh, I fucking hate werewolves, Cameron said. Sounds of engines roaring suddenly could be heard behind them. The noise drew closer as they ran, and finally Cameron looked behind. Big vehicles! Cameron shouted at Floof. Big and fast vehicles incoming! Just as it looked like the two sets of headlights were going to plow them over, the vehicles swerved to the right and left, landing on each side of Cameron and Floof. Cameron immediately turned and held his ethereal cannon toward the one on his right and saw that it was large enough to be driven by its exosuit-wearing pilot. It had a roll cage built around the two seats in the front, and on the back was a flatbed with a mounted minigun turret. Cameron saw the driver was none other than Jasmine the Eternial, he looked over at the vehicle to his left, and there were Alexa and Frank, smiling at him from their own exosuits. Get your fucking asses in, Alexa shouted and waved her arm toward the flatbed. Floof and Cameron each jumped onto the beds of the vehicles. A magnetic-feeling force seemed to hold their feet into place. You dirty, rotten, moldy-ass bitches! Floof bellowed with a laugh. Oh, to see you alive and well, my heart, it weeps. Oh, shut up, Alexa shouted as the wheels of the vehicle spun. Frank hung out the side of the vehicle, swiping his sword and collecting as much experience as he could, laughing like a maniac as he did. Good to see you alive, Cameron, Jasmine shouted back as she pressed on the gas of the vehicle. Hold on tight, this will get bumpy. The vehicle shot forward, plowing through anything that got in their way. Cameron launched a few fireballs, but missed most of his shots. Hitting anything while moving was a difficult task. Finally, he gave up and took hold of the minigun turret in front of him for support. He could feel and hear the air blowing all around his exosuit as his driver navigated them onto a road that led into the woods. He looked over at Floof, who had his arms outstretched and his head held back as he laughed with delight. The feeling of being with friends, no doubt, the source of his joy. Invite them! Floof's voice could be heard in the exosuit speaker system. Make them members of the party! Cameron asked the three Eternials to join his party. Suddenly, he could hear them all laughing together and talking through his comm system. Our destination is marked on the map, Cameron instructed Jasmine and Alexa. With these vehicles, getting there should take much less time, though we'll need to go through the storm to make it. Ah, oh, fuck, Frank declared with a bitter tone. Not the storm again. You've been in the storm? Floof asked. Yes, and we would have all died had it not been for Alexa. Jasmine said. Why Alexa? Floof asked. Because she bought us all the upgrades for our exosuits, Frank answered. Without her, the storm would have killed us all. How could you afford all that? Cameron shouted. That's a shit ton of money. Because bad bitches make bread, fucker, Alexa declared. Oh. Cameron nodded his head and didn't ask Alexa any more questions. 
Instead, he looked out at the road that Jasmine was guiding them down, and for a moment, he felt hope.